Is there anything as heroic as a random stranger saving the day? Have you wished that you could be that brave in a situation before? Most of us wouldn't know what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to be prepared. We've put together 10 of the best tips that can help you become this stranger if you're unfortunate enough to find yourself in an emergency situation. Even heroes need a day off from saving the world occasionally. Before we start, make sure to click subscribe so you can enjoy the Hub's videos during your time off. Concussion It's one of those weird illnesses that can't really be properly broken down, so all we know of concussion is that it's something that can happen if you hit your head. For most people, it's just a case of resting, but for 5% of us, it can be far more serious. As a result, it's important to know what to do if you or someone nearby seems to be suffering from a concussion, so you can ensure they don't suffer any long-term effects. First of all, it's important to check for any spine injuries. Generally speaking, if you think someone has a concussion, you're supposed to elevate his or her head to stop fluid rushing there. But doing this with a spine injury can become fatal. Instead, leave them exactly where they are and call emergency services. If it's not as serious as this, and they've simply just hit their head quite hard, make sure they're comfortable and not exhibiting any of the following symptoms. Loss of consciousness, a seizure, vomiting, or feeling confused. If they're not, send them home to get lots of rest. If they are, make sure they get seen to as soon as possible with a scan or a neurological test. Car brake failure. It's everybody's worst nightmare. You're driving along at high speed when suddenly you have to brake sharply, but for some unknown reason, your brakes have failed. What do you do? If you keep driving at such high speeds, you'll crash and who knows what could happen next. This one only applies if you're driving a manual car. So if you're driving automatic, you'll have to metaphorically hold still for a moment. Manual drivers should change gear into first or second gear, which will almost force the car to slow down. If you're driving automatic, you're better off forcing some brake fluid into the pedal. Keep pressing the brake pedal repeatedly, which will force some fluid down and should hopefully make the car slow down, if not stop entirely. If this hasn't worked after three or four pumps, use the handbrake. To ensure you don't skid rapidly, gently pull it up to increase the chance of a slow stop. Finally, if none of this looks like it's working, aim to drive in a safe direction. This might be onto some grass or a smaller road, but whatever you do, try to avoid any hills. We know that in this circumstance, you've got to deal with whatever surroundings are nearby, but steering the vehicle into an empty field instead of continuing down a main road can only work to your advantage. We are very excited to announce the Premium Network. The Premium gets you early access to videos from The Richest, Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and many other great channels. Literally thousands of videos in one place with ad-free browsing. Check out the premium by clicking this link. Sign up for free and start binge watching videos from your favorite channels. Perform the Heimlich Maneuver. You'll have seen it in movies hundreds of times, but have you ever considered whether or not you would actually be able to perform the Heimlich Maneuver if push came to shove? Literally? It might just look like a case of holding on to someone and pushing in the right direction, but it's so much more than that. If you see someone choking, first of all, you should stand behind them and wrap your arms around their waist. Place your hands against the victim's upper abdomen and make one of your hands into a fist. Then grab and hold onto the fist with your other hand and push it upward with a quick thrust. Make sure to avoid the rib cage and instead focus on the abdomen. Keep doing this until whatever they're choking on has come up and they're breathing normally again. On the slim chance you can't seem to get the object out, start performing CPR instead. If the person can't stand up, lie them on the floor on their back and use your body weight and the same fist motion to get them breathing again. Once they're okay, it's important for the victim to go and see a doctor just to ensure they're still in good health. Carry antihistamines. So, you're packing for your holiday. What's in your bag so far? A towel, sunscreen, maybe a good book and a change of clothes? Do you know what's missing? Antihistamine tablets. These tiny pills are your go-to if you have an allergic reaction when you're away and can't get medical attention straight away. They're not lifesavers, but they're excellent for prolonging the body's ability to keep calm, and they're perfect for reducing swelling, too. You might never have experienced a mosquito bite in your life, and if that's the case, then you're very lucky. On the other hand, most of us have been bitten by something or other once or twice, and sometimes the result can be scary. This is especially important if you're on holiday and can't speak the local language, but need help as soon as possible from an allergic reaction to a bite. If you react to the bite, your body will produce histamines. These are what causes the physical effects of the allergy. Antihistamines, as the name would suggest, send helpful chemical reactions to your body, which should help calm it down until a doctor can see you. We repeat, they are not lifesavers, but they're definitely important. Prevent deep vein thrombosis. 
You might think the worst thing about working in an office is the long and repetitive days, but we're here to tell you about something much worse than opening the same email thread three times an hour, deep vein thrombosis. Often shortened to DVT, this silent but deadly illness can creep up on you if you're not moving around enough. We're all told to get some exercise every day for health reasons, but it's not just to keep us trim, but also prevent DVT. If you're sitting still for too long, you're more likely to suffer a blood clot. Some of us are more susceptible than others, and it can always be prevented, but there are steps you can take to keep your body in tip-top condition. The first and easiest method is to walk around as much as possible. If you're tackling a huge project and it doesn't look like you'll get a chance to go for a stroll to the shop later, make sure you get up once an hour and walk around the room you're in a few times. Even five minutes of movement is enough to keep the blood pumping around your body, and it could end up saving your life. Look out for red eyes. Are there many things more annoying than looking back through photos and realizing you've got bright red eyes in half of them? Some people think it just happens because of the flash, or others might think it's due to the reflection from the color of your eyes, or even your genes. This could all be perfectly accurate, but there's also something you should also consider, which makes bad genetics seem like a tiny problem in comparison. If you're the only person with red eyes in your photo, it could be due to a type of eye cancer. Now, it's pretty rare and has only been noted in a few cases, but it's better to be safe than sorry, right? The disease is called retinoblastoma and can be diagnosed by looking into the eyes and seeing red. Sometimes this can be spotted easily, but for other people, it can be something as invisible as red eyes in a photo that seem to disappear in real life. This red eye could also be due to a variety of smaller, less significant problems, and the good news is that many of them are easily treatable. Generally speaking, if a few of you in a photo are slightly rosy-eyed, it's probably just due to the flash. Don't inflate inside. Most of us have been on a few airplanes in our time, and so we're pretty familiar with the safety precautions if anything goes wrong. Light and whistle to attract attention, oxygen mask from under the seat, and make sure to store heavy things securely, yada yada yada, we've all heard it before. But there's one thing that some people don't seem to be aware of that can make all the difference if something bad does happen and you need to leave the aircraft in a hurry. Jumping out of a plane into the sea isn't really a nice thought for any of us, and we're pretty sure that if the occasion did arise, we'd want to inflate our life jackets as soon as possible to make sure we're okay. However, this could be putting yourself and others at risk. If you inflate your jacket before you leave the airplane, you'll find it much more difficult to walk. This could be comical if you were at the seaside, but less so if you're jumping out of a plane. Instead, wait until you're outside the aircraft to inflate your jacket. It happens very quickly, so you don't need to rush, and it will help everybody out in the grand scheme of things. Check your windows when guests leave. Your friends are friends for a reason. Chances are you'll have something in common, or you'll have known them for a while, or you went to school with them or something. Most importantly, you probably trust them, especially if you're letting them into your home. But there's one thing you should always remember when your final guest leaves. Call us suspicious or bad friends or whatever, but you can never be too cautious when it comes to security. When your friends have left for the evening, double check your doors and windows are locked. Maybe one was left open by accident after a hot afternoon, but you probably don't want it left open overnight unless you live in a secure neighborhood. This is even more important if you've had guests over that you don't know too well, maybe a friend of a friend. We presume that most people come to the house with good intentions, but if someone knowingly leaves a window open, you can never be sure if they're planning on returning after hours or not. Sure, perhaps if you live on the 10th floor of a block of flats, you don't have to take the same precaution, but it's always better to be safe than sorry so you don't find yourself in front of an unwelcome visitor at 3 a.m. Save energy in an emergency. There are two important things you should do if you find yourself in an emergency situation with no access to food or water. Your main priority is to conserve your energy because you don't know when you'll be able to recharge. So, with this in mind, you want to allow your body to stay as relaxed as possible so you can use as little precious energy as possible. The first thing to try and do? Breathe through your nose. Believe it or not, you save a lot of energy simply through not breathing through your mouth. You might have to focus on this one at first, but it's really helpful when it comes to allowing your body to continue at its peak for longer. This also helps when it comes to calming down, because we imagine in this scenario it could be easy to panic. The second thing to do is not eat. If you don't have access to water, eating will only make you more dehydrated. It might seem difficult to stop yourself from reaching for the nearest edible item, but you can last much longer without food than you can without water. Staying hungry for a longer period of time could be worth it if you can hunt down water in that period. Keep that nearby shark happy. If you find yourself in the water with a nearby shark, it's crucial not to panic. We know it sounds stupid, and it's our first reaction to scream for help. 
but you'll last a lot longer if you follow the correct procedure. First of all, keep your eye on the shark at all times. Don't make any sudden movements, and if possible, try and keep still. The likelihood is that the shark will spot you and carry on with its day. But in order to not bother it, you need to keep as still as possible. Remember, you definitely won't be able to outswim a shark. Try and move so you're not blocking the shark's journey back to the open water. If you can stand up, try and back away very slowly toward the shore. If not, try and find a rock or something big and obtrusive to act as protection. If you need to defend yourself, aim to punch the shark on the nose or the eyes. These are sensitive areas and are your best bet for coming out alive. Sharks aren't known for having quick reactions, so this might be your safest option so you don't end up as dinner. After watching this video, you're more than prepared for any number of emergency situations. We hope that they don't happen to you, of course, but at least we can sleep easy knowing you do know what to do. We hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe to The Hub for the rest of our great videos. Thanks!